Hi everyone, welcome to the ninth lesson for topic 3.1 by Various Data Analysis. So this is going to be our last lesson for this topic as well. Okay, so yeah, no worry, it's going to be like a very short one because I just want to uh, explain something uh, which is called as outlier. Okay, so when you look at the learning outcome here, so uh, I put that it's not specifically stated because in your syllabus itself, it didn't state that you need to learn this. So this is more onto like a general knowledge that the students learn in year 11 already but it's very important because this concept will eventually come up in your past year but then it's just not like a very specific or it's not just written in your syllabus okay so we are going to learn what is that meant by outlier and we understand what is the impact of an outlier to a set of data that we have okay then after that, we need to identify the outlier and decide what do we need to do so that we can carry out a better analysis for our data. Okay, so let's look at the notes. Alright, let's look at the definition of outlier first. So outlier are extreme data points, okay, extreme data points that do not seem to belong with the rest of the data point. So basically, it's a data point that do not follow the general trend of the scatter plot. Okay, for example, when you try to look at this scatter plot, right? So what do you realize here is that this whole bunch of data points, they are actually quite close to each other, then they show the same trend. So meaning that when your EV increases, your RV also increases as well. But that's one point that when you first look at it, it's like not belong to the rest of the data points so it doesn't follow the trend that the other points show so i think it's very obvious that in this question so this is our outlier okay so i hope that you can understand the idea all right so the first one if let's say you are given a set of data and in your exams maybe after you draw the scatter plot then you realize that you have this outlier then first thing that you might you must need to check is whether you plot anything wrongly or not okay so the first one is like a common case which is outlier exists due to the incorrect plotting okay so which means that maybe when we try to use our calculator to construct the uh, scatter plot then maybe that's like one value that we key in wrongly so that's why that's like an outlier that doesn't follow the majority data points there okay but then if let's say after you check it then you realize that hey uh, the, all the data that you try to key in is actually correct then it might be due to another point that it is maybe inaccurate data, okay? So it's different than the first one. So inaccurate data, which means that maybe when someone collected the data, then they didn't realize that that's like one data. So maybe people say that it's like 72 marks, but he actually record like 27 marks, okay? So you know, like some careless mistakes, so that actually caused the outlier to happen, okay? So this two is like a careless mistake. Okay, then we have the other case inside. If let's say it's uh, extreme cases. Okay, so this thing is actually aligned to the other case where we say that it has a special condition. Okay, so later when we are trying to do the example one, then I'll explain this in further. So which means that uh, in a situation, so there will be a situation that's like more special than the normal situation that we have. Okay, so that's basically the idea. Okay, so what is the problem of outlier? So you'll realize that, right? How do we normally calculate our correlation coefficient? Correlation coefficient tell us how close your data points is, right? So that whether it will actually uh, create a strong relationship, a moderate relationship, or like a weak relationship. Okay, so now imagine if let's say this outlier doesn't exist, right? then you can see that a whole bunch of this point here can actually give us a high R, right? Because their relationship is pretty strong. They are quite close together. But if let's say I have this outlier, which is like super far away from my other data points, then what is that become? My correlation coefficient will be decreased because of the existence of this outlier. Am I right? So outlier can significantly reduce the strength of correlation coefficient. Okay, so yeah, because uh, by having an outlier, eventually it actually costs your other data points is not close together anymore. Okay, so the other thing is that outlier can significantly 
alter the location of the regression line. So for example, this is uh, by using this scatter plot. So you have realized that if let's say that is this outlier, right? So when we talk about the regression line, it's a line that actually minimizes the square distance from all the data points to the line. Okay, so this is how the line is created. So you imagine if let's say I have this outlier, right? Then the distance, I will need to minimize it as well. So that's why instead of like having a normal regression line, like what we have in second case here, then what we need to do is we now need to lower it down a little bit so that it's in the middle with this point as well. So that's why this is how we get the first regression line. Then you'll realize that it's actually not in the middle as good as this one. Okay, so that's why if let's say you have outlier, then you want to decide regression line, then this is your regression line. If let's say you remove this outlier and the outlier is not included in your calculation of regression line, you will realize that you get this line. So by looking at this one, right, when you try to do prediction, then obviously you can actually uh, expect that what you are getting in this model is going to be much more accurate. Because what is this? So if let's say I were to predict something that's like here, or okay, maybe let's talk about a further example. When I want to predict something that's here. So you'll realize that the number that I get is going to be lower than the normal number that should that I should get. So you see, if I were to draw another one that's nearer 40, so this number should give me a value that's like pretty near to 30, you see? But then because of I'm trying to lower down the position a bit to actually tolerate with the outlier here, then my prediction will eventually become lower than the one that I should be getting, okay? So that's why having an outlier is going to change our position of regression line. So the model that we used to represent wouldn't be the best one. So the prediction that we do is not going to be that reliable anymore. Okay, because when we talk about if let's say the R is low, then which means the prediction that we did is not reliable as well, right? So that's why what do we need to do if let's say there's outlier involved. So an analyst may consider to remove the outlier so that it can improve the strength of correlation coefficient and get a regression model that better represents the data. Okay, so which means because we doesn't know maybe this is like a special condition that I doesn't want to take into consideration or this is like some accurate data collection that I, I mean it doesn't it doesn't represent these data points well. Okay, so that's why I might want to remove it. Okay, so now let's try to look at example one so you can understand it better. Okay, the following data was collected on the number of seconds for which people of different ages could hold their breaths. Okay, so we have their age with the respective time that they can actually hold their breath. Okay, so draw a scatter plot in your calculator and calculate the correlation coefficient. Okay, so I hope that you have your uh, TI inspired beside you. So try to key in all your data and to uh, construct a scatter plot and to get your value for R. Alright, so I'm going to fast forward this process.
All right, so you should get your scatter plot by now. Okay, so let's try to look at your scatter plot. Okay, so do you realize that there's any outlier here? Actually, you can see that, right? It's basically the points here. I think it's pretty obvious. Okay, so now what do we need to do is uh, draw a scatter plot, calculate the correlation coefficient. So let's try to just uh, leave it here first. So later you are going to come back and then to write down what is the outlier. Okay, so let's write down our R. Okay, so our correlation coefficient, so you can see it's negative 0 0.3969. Okay, so you can always read the full value here and to know that how you should round it. So after 9 is 0, so that's why it's just 3969. Alright, so part A, the correlation coefficient is R equal to negative 0 0.3969. So describe the data using the R value. Okay, so by looking at this, then we know that it's a negative one, right? Then the magnitude is pretty near to zero. So, but it's still in a part where you can say that it's still a linear. I mean, that's not in the extent that it's no relationship. So we say that it's a weak, negative linear relationship. Okay, weak, negative linear relationship. Okay, so now what you can see in this question is that part C explain why the R value is not useful in describing this set of data. Okay, so which means let's go back to our calculator. So as you can see, right, from our scatter plot that we plot, you would realize that actually all these points, they are pretty close to each other. Am I right? So I would say that it's considered a strong one. But why is it our R so low that it becomes a weak relationship? It's actually because of this outlier, am I right? So that's why in this case, why R is not useful in describing this set of data? The answer is simple, is that the data set has a outlier. Okay, so the data set has a outlier. So the problem of outlier is it reduces our value of R, am I right? So the outlier reduces the strength of correlation coefficient. Okay, so that's the idea of it. So now later we need to uh, identify the outlier, then we try to remove it and we see that is there any difference with the R if let's say we remove the outlier. Okay, so D, identify the outlier and recalculate the D. Okay, so in this question, let's try to look at, uh, go back to our calculator. So now you can uh, just, I mean, use your calculator, the cursor here, then you move around, then you go to this point, then you realize uh, you can read the reading here. So this set of data is actually 7572. Okay, so this is the data of outlier. So outlier is equal to 7572 okay so this is the data point okay so now what do we need to do is if that's the outlier then we need to uh, identify it then we remove it right then we recalculate the r value so now let's go back to our set of data and remove 75 and 72 so 75 so you can just find it yeah 75 72 so what you just do is you just delete it Okay, is that right? So after you delete it, then what you can try to do is you can straight away go to your linear regression. Okay, so yeah, it's the same thing in your exam. Yeah, you do not actually need to write down everything again. So basically, after you delete the data, the linear regression here will straight away change for you. Because the linear regression will be depending on your column of the age and the time, right? So as long as you change anything in your column here, then the linear regression here will change accordingly as well if you key in everything correct. Okay, so as you can see here, your R now become much more stronger than the previous one. So you see by removing only one point, which is the outlier, it actually make, makes your relationship of your, I mean, make your strength of your relationship in your numerical data become much more stronger. So our new R is zero negative 0 0.9552, okay? So the new R is equal to negative 0 0.9552, okay?
So that's why what do you find? So you can write there that removing outlier. Okay, increase or uh, yeah, increases the strength of R. Okay, or you can write increases the value of R as well. So indicating a strong negative. Yeah, so now it becomes a strong negative linear relationship already. Okay. So let me try to use this uh, question to actually explain to you what is the case where like there's extreme cases or there is a uh, special condition. Okay, so when we try to look at this uh, investigation, right, it's about people for, from different age, so how long they can hold their breath, am I right? So that's why it can be, so this is basically our set of data. So you can imagine that the logic of negative is that if let's say you are younger, then you can actually hold, I mean, hold your breath in a longer time. Then if let's say someone that's older, then which means the time that they can hold their breath is going to be lesser. Okay, so that's why in this case, but what you can realize here is like this is the oldest person, but the time that he can hold the breath is like the longest one. So it's like, I mean, that's the case for extreme. So which means it's not the normal cases that we will actually encounter. But you might say that maybe it's possible. Yeah, it's possible, but that is special condition. So which means, okay, maybe I give an example that this person is like someone that's like very good in sports or uh, he used to swim a lot and so on. You get what I mean? So that's why he actually practiced and trained a lot. So that's why until this age, then the time that he can hold his breath is actually very high. But do you think that this special case is good enough to represent someone at that age range? It's not going to, right? Because, I mean, when you try to look at 100 old person, then maybe only like one or even like uh, out of 1000 person, then you only can get one person. So it's not like the normal case. It's not the general case that we actually want to take into the consideration. So that's the idea of what is that meant by special case or action case, okay? Then the other possible thing is that, yeah, maybe it's just incorrectly, or uh, I mean, the data is collected incorrectly. So for example, this should be 27, but instead, uh, then the people wrote down 72. So it become a wrong data. So that's like the data that is like not a good one for our better analysis is, okay, I hope that you understand that we try to remove the outlier the aim is not to say that we want to increase our R because when you should look at your calculator, right? That's a lot of point. Okay, if let's say now, I try to put in my regression line. Okay, so you will see that like, for example, this point and this point and this point compared to the other point, they are like further, right? Because the other point is like pretty close to the number. So if let's say your target is to like you just want to uh, remove the points because of you want to get a high R, then I mean at the end we are still going to like remove this, remove this, remove this. You get what I mean, right? But we need to have a lot of data points because like for example, if let's say when we try to talk about the age, the relationship between the age and the time that people can hold their breath, there's like a lot of variation that can be happen, right? So this will actually uh, decided by your R. So if let's say you remove all the points that's like further away from your regression, then what happens is that your R doesn't represent the population well. Am I right? Because if you remove everything, then at the end you get negative 0 0.99. So which means that there's like 99% uh, of variation of the people, of the time that people hold their breath can be explained by the variation of the age. But we know that actually the variation happened that is, I mean, the, the reliability, the strength isn't like 0 0.9 that high. Okay, so I hope that you can understand the idea. But why we remove our data, our outlier, is basically so that it can represent our population much better. Okay, and then we want to get like the general trend of, of what we want. Okay. So now we'll be looking at the very short notes, then after that, uh, that's the end of this lesson.
Okay, so this is the part where we will be discussing the part of cropping or trimming bivariate data. Okay, so the idea is a bit similar like outlier. So uh, it's, it's just that maybe in this case, it will be a bunch of points. So it's not just like one or two points that's like obviously show. Okay, so sometimes there might be a bunch of points that seems uh, not to follow the general trend of your scatter plot. So hence, what we do is we crop the data so that we can have a better analysis, okay? So yeah, it's like we want to have a better regression model so that we can do a better prediction. So the idea is pretty similar to removing the outlier, okay? So as you can see in this set of data, so what can you realize here is that there's a group of data points that like show you a very clear relationship of a linear model. And then after that, it's very close to each other and it's in a negative part. So what do you realize here is that 1, 2, 3, 4, this is something similar like your outlier, am I right? Because these are the points that is good for me to fit into a linear regression. So that's why what we try to do here is we try to crop the data, so which means we only take this part of data. Okay, so the same thing for this one. So you realize that uh, at the extreme point, so you see, right, this is the, uh, I mean, majority of your data points actually located in the middle and they are close to each other and show the same trend, which when your EV increases, your RV increases as well. But all this point is like the extreme points that is like, this is my normal range, right? Okay. And then these are like the data points that out of it. Okay. One example for this is that uh, if you can remember, we talk about the temperature and the growth rate. Okay. So that's why if let's say the temperature is too high, the growth rate will be alternate as well. Maybe it depends on like how well the plant can adapt to a hot temperature. Am I right? Then for the colder one, maybe there are some plants that are like good in adapting like a colder temperature and so on. So that's why the, I mean, your results wouldn't be that accurate if you want to take into the data points that's like in the extreme value. So which means in this case, maybe it's like from 0 until 10, then here is like 30. So this is like after 30. So which means... Uh, when you try to carry out your regression model, you can imagine that when you try to predict something that's before 10 and that's after 30, it's going to be something that's similar like extrapolation already. Because before and after, it doesn't show you that it is able, I mean, it doesn't show you that it is able to fit into a linear regression model. Because when you try to look at this part, it's basically like no relationship for this one as well. So that's why when we try to crop our data, we try to crop the middle only. Okay, so same thing for this part. You can see that all this data can be grouped into two categories. The first one is like the front one, maybe until this point. Okay, then the other bunch is like the back one. So you can see that the data point starts with a very good positive or uh, strong positive linear relationship. Then after that, it just like scattered around and it just become like no relationship. So that's why, which means it's the same case like this case. So which means the data points after maybe this is 27, the data points after 27 is going to show you that uh, the EV and RV has no relationship to each other. So that's why in this case, if we were to predict something, we, only, we know that we only can predict up to 27 only. So this is the case where it will be good that we can try to crop this one. Okay, then from here, then you will be able to get a better regression line. Because if not, then you imagine I were to uh, take into the consideration for this one, then my regression line will actually become something like this. Because I also want to stay in the middle of all this point, right? Then you'll realize that all these points are actually not close to this regression line. So if we were to read something that's between this range, right, you wouldn't be able to get a good prediction, okay? So that's the idea. So don't worry about that. Normally, if let's say you have an outlier or you have a cropping or trimming, right? The question will actually ask relative question. So either they will say that you need to remove your uh, outlier and do this, or they ask you like what to do and so on. They wouldn't actually expect you to look at the data that you decided yourself that you need to take all this data out. 
Okay, so don't worry about that. I mean, all the instruction will be pretty clear, especially in your exam. So to know that what is the data that you want, what is the data that you want to do. If let's say you need to crop, then they wouldn't suddenly expect you to crop without they mention anything. Okay, so uh, you will be uh, actually look at these two, look at two examples about cropping and trimming in your about uh, outlier and cropping data in your exercise as well okay so spend some time to understand and then to uh, do your homework so that's pretty much for today's lesson thank you